All right, guys. Are you a fan of old style military rifles? Say you have an M1 Grand, M1 Carbine, a Mosin Nagant, or something even just a little more modern like an SKS, AK-47, AR-15, M1A, or any one of those firearms that are old military rifles. So, uh, today we're taking a look at an interesting firearm. This is the Kiapa, or Citadel, or Legacy Sports, M122 Carbine. So, uh, the reason this has really like three names was, um, it's made by Kiapa Firearms Group in Italy. Uh, and originally Kiapa didn't have like an outpost here in North America where they were distributing these from. So they were bringing them through Legacy Sports International and the subset of Legacy Sports called Citadel. So this particular firearm is marked Citadel on it. Uh, so it did come in through the Legacy Sports brand. However, uh, now Kiapa has their own uh, outpost here in North America, in Ohio, I believe, and so they are just calling them Kiapa M122 carbines. They're all the same firearm produced in the same place um, with maybe some minor variations from one to the next, uh, but for the most part, they're the same firearms. All right, so that kind of explains the name confusion. If you try Googling this, you might see some different names. So this firearm, First impressions, it's a 22 long rifle copy of the famous M1 carbine. So maybe you're like me and you really love the M1 carbine, but it's just, one, they're expensive to get, and two, you know that you're not gonna be able to afford to shoot 30 carbine all day, but you can shoot your 22. So you wanna get a copy. You know, this is, in, just looking at it, a very good copy of the M1 carbine. I'll pick it up and show you some things about it. Um, you know, We'll talk about some of the materials used. This particular model is offered in both a wood stock and a plastic stock. It's a black plastic stock. I did handle that particular firearm with the stock, plastic stock, but I wasn't impressed with the quality of the plastic. Plus, this wood just looks beautiful on this firearm. Um, I think they did a nice job with the wood, and you know, overall, the aesthetics of this looks just like your standard M1 you know, carbine. So this firearm, just to clear it, it is a clear firearm. So taking a peek at it, let's get you. Now it doesn't come with the magazine pouch or the oil tube or sling. Just looking at it, it, just, it looks great. It looks just like an M1 carbine. But, you know, there are obviously differences. One, it's, it's a blowback operated firearm, as with most 22 long rifles. Uh, but let's just talk about some of the materials. So this is a steel, steel barrel. Uh, it's got an aluminum shroud right here. Uh, we've got a plastic bayonet lug. We've got a plastic barrel band. We've got plastic front and rear sights. The receiver itself is made out of aluminum. Uh, and of course, the bolt is steel. And the housing down here is all uh, plastic as well, polymer. So, you know, build quality, the steel, the aluminum, that's pretty standard for 22s. You know, a lot of 22 manufacturers do use plastic, unfortunately, because it keeps manufacturing costs down. Uh, and, you know, we can't blame them, I guess, for doing that, even in this firearm. But, you know, it, it does detract a little bit from these. I get a little nervous with the plastic sights. I've read a few reports of these things falling in the safe or being dropped and piece of the plastic breaking off from the front sight or the rear sight. You know, it is all, all just plastic. So moving on, let's talk about, so you get one of these firearms and you want to maybe change the sights for GI standard uh, metal sights. Well, I'm gonna refer you guys to a link that I found online. It's the M1 Carbine Forum where they talk about different M1 carbines, and they do have an entire page dedicated to this particular firearm, and they go over some of the differences between this and a true GI M1 carbine. One of them is, you know, the sights themselves. This is a metric firearm, it's made in Italy, and thus there are some slight measurement differences between the GI US standards. So, you know, it is not a perfect fit taking out these plastic sights, Plus, the steel sight going into an aluminum receiver can uh, lead to some problems as well. It can be done, uh, and almost all the parts can be changed to a GI standard, but there's none of them that just are easy swap. They all need some sort of fitting to make that work. So, 
even the stock itself, just putting an oiler bottle, bottle in to hold the sling can't just be done easily. Uh, you can't just throw it in there. And on that link that I provided, it shows you the difference and the cutout right here that prevents you from just putting your oiler stock and sling in. So in order to get that sling into this firearm, I did have to um, take a little wood foul to it to open up that stock a little bit. And then I hit it with one of these uh, Minwax wood finish dark walnut stain pens. And you can't even tell that I made any modification at all. And again, it was a very slight modification to begin with. To get these uh, magazine pouches on, you do have to take the stock off the firearm, slide it on, and then put the firearm back together. Um, but other than that, you know, it's, it's a pretty nice firearm. Uh, like I said, other than the fact that it's got a lot of plastic, it does have your manual bolt hold open. Charging handle is aluminum, pretty nice. Uh, you know, one thing that, there are some things that do feel chintzy about this firearm. One, I already talked about the sights. Another thing is the safety down here. Um, it just feels really cheap, like I could break it off if I'm too rough with it. And same with the mag releases, not as bad, but just not quite you know, as quality as I'd like. Uh, the safety, you know, it doesn't say safer fire either, and maybe that's because that's standard for M1 carbines. But for you know, average people, I think there should be some indication of fire and safe, even if it detracts a little bit away from the uh, military issue. Uh, let's look, take a look at the magazine. So it comes with one 10 round magazine, and you can see here, it is the magazines themselves are labeled Chiapa. See if they both are. Yep, they both are. Magazines go in nice and easy. Um, just to show you, the mag does hold open the bolt on the last round, but to lock it back, you still have to get that manual hold open. So the magazines are pretty reliable. Again, they're just pol polymer magazines. But um, I have to talk about that a little bit. When I first got this firearm, one of the magazines that I purchased had a piece of plastic molding hanging up the uh, follower and was having some problems with malfunctions due to that. Um, it was pretty easy to see where this was hanging up and so just taking a little pocket knife at the range, sticking it down in, in the magazine and snipping off that extra little piece of molding and after doing that I've had no problems ever since. It's been a reliable firearm um, and you know I really enjoy it. It's a good copy. You know it's not the highest quality, it's certainly not meant to be dragged through the bush or beat up on. You know, it's just for plinking at the range and giving you that M1 carbine feel. And as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the best M122s you can get. You know, Ruger 1022 throws one in a carbine style stock, but you know, it's still not the same. You're still having an enclosed receiver, you're just not getting that overall the, the same feeling when you shoot it. Um, so, guys, let's just roll in some footage of us shooting this out at the range, uh, and then we'll do a follow-up, you know, final thoughts section and talk about any problems we have while we're shooting. Okay, guys, so here we are out on the range with the Kiapa Citadel Legacy Sports M122 carbine. Uh, we're just going to shoot some rounds downrange. We're about 35 yards from some steel plates. Uh, we're just going to see how it shoots and have some fun here. failure and that's a dud round so I'm gonna have to lock this back and clear this malfunction all right guys we got that malfunction cleared um, I've been having a lot of poor primer strikes with this Remington Golden Bullets uh, this particular box of ammo has been malfunctioning on some of my other farms as well uh, but uh, you know that you can't really blame this firearm for that
She locked back on the last round on that empty mag. Manual will hold it open. Now, while we're shooting this, I do want to just talk about a couple of things. One is that um, because this is not enclosing a receiver with a small ejection port for the brass, Kiapa did make a video saying that it is very important to wear eye protection with this particular firearm. Uh, and the reason is because it is possible to have an out of battery ignition with the, uh, if the slide doesn't close all the way, somewhere around like there. And because there is no enclosed receiver, uh, it's more likely that some of those hot gases and possible debris could end up in the shooter's face. Um, you know, I haven't had any issues with that, thankfully. Uh, and you can watch their video where they talk about this and they explain uh, that it's just really kind of an unfortunate uh, drawback of this design but they wanted to keep this as close to a traditional M1 carbine as possible so, so they didn't want to enclose uh, the action area in a receiver. Alright let's reload and take a few more shots. We're just going to take a look at the action of this firearm in slow motion. Go ahead. Alright guys, for this group of uh, shooting, I'm just going to take five shots uh, nice and slow at the head of that steel target, then we'll go take a peek at the groups. This is going to be all offhand. Uh, you know, the re I'm not going to do a real accuracy test of this firearm. It seems to be pretty accurate. It does, the receiver is cut for 22 tip-off style rings, so you could potentially put a scope on this thing, uh, but keeping it cl a classic, uh, I'm choosing you know, not to do that. We're just going to do some practical accuracy testing here with five. Nice slow shots. Okay, all five of those were hits. Let's go take a look at that group. All right guys, so offhand, uh, this is about four inches wide. We've got one, two, three, four, and five. Again, this is 35 yards. I'm not your best shot. If we would uh, put this thing in a rest, I think you'd get much better accuracy. But this is more just uh, function and practical accuracy. All right, let's do some more shooting. reload. That is an actual misfeed we had there and that bullet is uh, pretty well pretty well destroyed. There you go. All right guys. I have to apologize, uh, I've been having some real issues with Remington uh, Golden Bullets lately. Usually, for me, they've been a pretty darn reliable ammunition, uh, but lately, I don't know, the last batch I've gotten has some pretty bad primers. So you did see this thing had uh, two misfeeds, you know, and for a reproduction firearm, uh, you know, it does the trick for me, even though you do have a misfeed here and there. Those dud primers, I can't blame on this firearm. Uh, otherwise, it works really well. For the most part, it's been very reliable. It is cold today, too. Uh, maybe that has a little bit to do with some of these duds uh, not going off. Pretty uh, accurate. Heck of a lot of fun to shoot here at the range. Uh, and I'm not the only one that enjoys it. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to head back to the house, do a little final thoughts on this thing. All right, guys. After shooting this, I just wanted to wrap this up with a quick final thought. 
So, you know, it's been a really reliable firearm, a lot of fun to shoot at the range. Uh, I have some other friends who are enthusiasts, like to collect M1 carbines and grands, and they just love shooting this thing. Um, but I do want to just, you know, make some notes really quickly about some of the things I don't like. One, I already pointed out the plastic sights, just not a big fan of those. They just don't instill a lot of confidence to me. Um, you know, I did have to make that adjustment to the magazine that I talked about earlier. Cleaning this thing is a bit of a pain. We're removing the stock, um, and then the way you have to take the uh, bolt out is a little bit challenging, but it can be done. You know, it just takes time. It's not like a bolt action where you just rip the bolt out. Uh, but overall, you know, my final thoughts on this firearm is that it's just, it's awesome. So go out and pick one of these up. You know, I got this one on sale for under $250 out the door, so they can be had for a really great price. And for that price, uh, you know, this thing's a cool collectible uh, firearm and just fun to shoot at the range. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching this video. This is the Kiapa M122. Like and subscribe and put any questions down in the comments. All right, bye.